my name is Rachel and I'm 37 years old. I love to play netball and I love keeping fit and sporty. I first started to feel pain probably about 10 years before my diagnosis. It was starting with like a sharp dull ache in the side of my abdomen on the one side. And I think at first like it would last like maybe less than an hour. And then I wouldn't feel it again for like another year. So I just passed it off as like indigestion or something like that. But then as the years went by, the pain got more and more frequent and also more and more severe. And it would last for longer periods of time. It started to be accompanied with feeling sick. And sometimes I'd be sick, like for no reason at all. And I think, you know, growing up as a young adult, you put it down to like drinking or eating too much, but, but it, there's literally no reason. Sometimes I just felt really ill and I would go to the doctors, but by the time I went to the doctors, quite often the pain had um, surpassed. And I was almost trying to explain a pain that I had experienced maybe last week for like an hour or two. And it didn't really alarm the doctor too much, especially being so fit, young and healthy. Um, I was even told by one doctor not to worry, it, you know, because I wondered if it might be cancer because I could feel a tiny lump and she had a feeling that not to worry, she, you know, you're not going to have cancer, you're so fit and healthy and young, like basically put that to the back of your mind and so I did and then in 2016, like it, I had a really bad bout and uh, I was about 32 at the time, it just like was persistent for the whole weekend and um, I ended up back at the doctors and like, I was like, this is unbearable. I can't live with this at the moment. It's just unexplainable and it's not going away. And I really, really persisted. And there happened to be a locum doctor in that day. So it was a different doctor who I'd seen before. And he sent me off for an ultrasound. And that was kind of the first time I'd have anyone sort of investigate what was going on in the inside. And it came back that there was some suspicious uh, mass. So that was followed up with a CT scan. And um, yeah, the story from there went on that it was a neuroendocrine tumor. When I was finally diagnosed, actually it was a, a massive sense of relief and also some sense of, I told you so. Um, not that I wanted to say that, but a part of me, I think I knew my own body um, even more so than my doctor. Um, and I just wish I'd persisted sooner to have like intrusive investigations done. But I was young and naive and you want to believe what the doctor tells you. When it comes to friends and family, like I'm quite happy to explain uh, what's going on in my life with friends and family. I think more so for like my mum, my dad and my husband, I wanted to have a bit more of an intimate a relationship with my journey with them because they were obviously even more so confused and relieved at the same time. So actually the support groups that I went to in the Southwest, um, I would invite my mum and dad and, and my husband to those. And it was quite often that some of the patients would bring along family, friends, you know, relatives, and that really helped them. And the Neuroendocrine Cancer UK charity also have a handout book with um, loads of information inside um, and I was given one of those for free and I was also given a second copy which I shared with mum and dad and they just read through that and then they started to really understand what it was I was going through. So at this moment in time living in Munich it's a beautiful sunny day. Life's great like I can do everything I did before if not more and I think you just got to make the most of it.